Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off a 50 cent pick four at Saratoga on Travers Saturday with grade one stakes action. This is the ballerina race number 10, seven eighths of a mire for fillies and mares. Let's take a peek at this field and this is an excellent race. The five wicked halo is cross-centered at Charlestown on Friday. If she does go, you'll have the top three finishers from last year's Breeders Cup Philly and Mare Sprint in the ballerina. Yeah, it's a it's a really good field. I think it kind of centers around these two morning line favorites, Dan, the six and the seven, um, two really, really good Philly and Mare sprinters in this race. But it's not like the the rest of this field, the horses that are filling out the rest of this field, it's not like they're not any good. This is a really, really good addition of the ballerina. The pace scenario could be key to the ballerina. We take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector and Echo Zulu, who ran just a tremendously fast race at Saratoga earlier this meet, might have the best trip up front in a race shape that favors front runners. Mike, if Echo Zulu gets an easy lead, she's going to be real tough to catch. Yeah, if she clears off in this race, and I think there's a real chance that she does, um, she is supposed to be really tough to beat. And I think that's kind of the key for her, Dan. Her two starts this year, They've, you know, obviously decided that she's a sprinter now. They've really taken no prisoners in her first two starts. And I think that's how you have to ride her in this ballerina. When she was defeated by Goodnight Olive at the Breeders' Cup uh, last November, she didn't really get that aggressive ride, and I thought it cost her. The horse with the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating is the number one, Sterling Silver. She's 30 to 1 on the morning line in the ballerina. She likes Saratoga. Here's her most recent start, going 7 eighths at the spa back on July the 29th. It was over a wet track in a second level allowance race. She comes from last in this short field to win. She ran a big race in last year's Prioress, going three quarters of a mile, Mike. She was something like 37 to 1, and she got beat a neck. Yeah, she ran really well in that race. This is a good performance, too. Over a wet track, it's a short field. It's not a particularly strong field. But it's just another good performance for this New York bread. She's really underrated. Um, is this race going to be a little too tough for her? It kind of seems like it is. But her form so far as a four-year-old, it's really good. Matareya, the number two, has the ability to win a race like the ballerina. She won a kind of weak edition of the Acorn last year when Echo Zulu was scratched at the gate, but she ran well in several other races, beaten favorite in the test last year, going seven eighths of a mile, but has become a bit of an in and outer. A nice score, two starts back in the Derby City Distaff, and then beaten 12 lengths last time out at Ellis Park by a talented runner named Society. Yeah, and a race that came back fast, too, in that Chicago last time, a 105 buyer for Society, who, listen, it was that Ellis Park strip there, Dan. Society was the speed on the rail. Matt Array was sort of in the outside trip chasing, and it just seems like that wasn't really working um, at Ellis Park over the summer. So maybe that's enough of an excuse. I think the real problem with her is two back when she got the grade one win and defeated Goodnight Olive. It's one of those races where when you go back and pull the replay, you kind of get the idea that if Goodnight Olive had found anywhere to run in the last furlong of that race, Matt Araya might have been second. Matt Araya did finish ahead of a next out stakes place horse in that last race. One that came back, I believe, was second in a stake at Ellis with an 85 buyer. Mary Quite Contrary, the number three, is somewhat underrated. Second in the Madison, two starts back while no match for Goodnight Olive. She then ran in the Honorable Miss at Saratoga and she couldn't get within hailing distance of Echo Zulu. No one could. It was a short field. She didn't break very well. She just had too much to do. I wish she did something, though. I kind of do, too. At the same time, I think that's the kind of race where I don't think you want to be too hard on her for the honorable miss. That was not a race that was run to suit this filly at all. Um, the pace was solid, but there was just no way you're going to get to Echo Zulu in that spot. I actually felt like she ran really well in the Madison two starts back. Only second best, but I thought that was a really good performance. And I can see her rebounding out of the honorable miss and running much better in this spot. And I think that makes her a little bit interesting to use somewhere at a price. If the racetrack comes up wet, you might want to consider the number four, Dr. B, a horse that popped a 103 buyer speed figure going a one-turn mile in her final start of 2022, the grade three go for wand. In her most recent start, she was second to Echo Zulu. She chased outside, just couldn't get within hailing distance. She's the kind of mare that's tactical, though, and if someone goes out there and pushes Echo Zulu, maybe she gets a piece of this at the very least at a price. Louis Sai is originally named to mount. There'll be a jockey change. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to look at her, too. She'll be a price in this race, so I won't knock her too hard. She got second last time in the Honorable Miss. I didn't think she ran the second-best race uh, in that in that spot behind Echo Zulu necessarily, but she did get second. She was pretty bad two starts back, but I guess you don't want to hold that one against her. I think she's okay, Dan. I just think she's been pretty tough in this race. 
Wicked Halo finished third in last year's Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint behind Goodnight Olive, behind Echo Zulu. I didn't think she had the greatest trip that day. I'm not sure she would have won with the cleanest journey, but she's come back this year in good form for Steve Asmussen. Four starts. She sit the board in all those races. And last time out at Ellis Park, she actually sat off the pace at one to five, and she won. <laughs> yeah, it was a race that she was supposed to win. She did what she was supposed to do there. Um, too bad her better roses was pretty good against Goodnight Olive. I didn't think she had, you know, some kind of huge excuse there. She was only second best, but it was a fine performance. Um, I thought she, you know, I think she's good. I think she would need a lifetime best if she was going to beat this field. And remember, she is cross-entered at Charlestown on Friday. Echo Zulu is the number six. She's won eight of ten lifetime starts. She has been good since day one. The winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and champion two-year-old filly of 2021. She's found her niche as sort of a six furlong to a one-turn mile horse. A 112 buyer speed figure in the honorable miss. She went to the lead, shrugged off the solid Franks Rocket, and is on her way. Yeah, this is this is impressive stuff. This is a really fast race. They again, they just took no prisoners here right from the start. Went to the front. Frank's Rocket, to her credit, actually tried to race Echo Zulu here um, and did so for about the first half mile. But she was just no match. Got shrugged off and got really tired. Meanwhile, this horse just kept going in a really fast race. She was really good in there. She was really good off the layoff. Again, going back to that Breeders' Cup last year, I just feel like not going aggressively from post twelve in there. I just felt like it really cost her. They, did, they didn't send. She got stuck four wide around the track chasing that pace. Well, Goodnight Olive, to me, just got a way better trip. Um, I think things could be a lot different this time. She's a Breeders' Cup winner that's 8 for 10 lifetime. So is the 7, Goodnight Olive. 8 for 10 lifetime. Last year's Philly and Mare champion sprinter, after beating a couple of these in the Philly and Mare turf sprint, she hasn't missed a beat this year. She won the Madison, a grade 1, over Mary Quite Contrary in her seasonal debut. She had that tough trip you mentioned in the Derby Distaff, and then she beat three of these in the Bed of Roses at Belmont going 7 eighths back on June the 17th. The race where she settled off of the pace, she gets into the clear, and she's going to have to earn this one against a good field you have wicked halo in here caramel swirl is a lot better at seven furlongs i think than six that's why she missed the last race good solid effort for good night olive and i like that they gave her a little break after this race i like this performance too and i do think the two horses that she's running down are pretty good so that plays into it but even just going back to the start of the race that i mean she broke and she could have been on the lead in this race but i read just took a hold of her he let those horses go ahead and then he switched out in the stretch and closed them down. I, that was a really good performance. She should have won two starts back. She should be on a really long winning streak into this. Um, and we'll just see what happens. It's the rematch with Echo Zulu. They're both really good. Um, and they're both going to be short prices. But she'll probably be the better price this time. She won the ballerina. She is six for seven. Last year, she won the ballerina. She won six for seven lifetime at the seven eighths of a mile distance. We saw Caramel Swirl give a really good account of herself last time out when third of the better roses. She sort of made the first move into the pace that day. She got a little bit tired at the end. I think she's a little bit underrated. She was second last year to Goodnight Olive in the ballerina. Ten to one's on a fair price if you want to try to complete that exacta if you're against Echo Zulu. Yeah, I might be able to do something like that. So I'm a big fan of hers. I, I am. I think it's fair to question whether or not she's good enough, though, to beat both Goodnight Olive and, uh, and, and Echo Zulu in this race. It seems like it's going to be tougher. I thought she ran fine last time. She didn't really have an excuse in there, in my opinion. I thought she ran well in the ba ballerina last year. She's only second best to Goodnight Olive. So she's got her work cut out for her, but I, I'm a big fan. and I could use her somewhere. Kicking off a 50 cent pick four, let's take a look at our top selections for the grade one ballerina. We're both going to go with Echo Zulu, both blown away by that last performance visually, as well as from a buyer's speed figure standpoint, could be loose on the lead. Yeah, it feels like that maybe that was kind of a deciding factor for me that she just might be the, the main speed in this race. And I think that makes her really tough. I chalked it out, though. I went six, seven. You're going 6-7. If it's wet, I want to consider Dr. B maybe to split the two favorites at a big price. She kind of runs that big race once in a while if the track is wet. 6-7-8-3 for Mike, 6-4-7-8 for me in the grade one ballerina. Best of luck.